All right, Bang Bang, today's Thursday. It's July 1st. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. In studio guest today, I'm joined by James. James owns a company called The Pool Guys. Uh, so he fixes, repairs, and installs pools. Interesting guy off the jump. I'm just going to say that, James. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for having me here. I know it's July 4th coming up, and everybody loves their swimming pool in their backyard to have their picnics, family gatherings, and... It's been very, very popular this year. Last year was crazy. Uh, the number of pools that was built was uh, the biggest change since 1947 when uh, everybody came back from the war. Uh, the middle class uh, had some free extra money and they, they started building pools. Again, in 1947 was your first above ground pools that were built. Subsequently, they were taken overseas during the Korean War and they were uh, uh, used in, in army camps. And when the GIs got back home, they knew that it was a very inexpensive way to have a pool in your backyard. And that, that just took off and exploded. Ever since then, uh, above grounds and in-ground pools have been on a steady incline. They do keep up with the, uh, they do keep up with the housing market. Uh, last year was unprecedented. Uh, some 200% increase in sales in pools last year. Because of COVID. Because of COVID. Everybody wanted their own little backyard oasis, and uh, they got it. Wow. So I, I say this because we, we talked a little bit a couple days ago. We probably had like a 15, 20-minute phone conversation. Sure. And you said, I want to do the show, but I don't want people to contact me, <laughs> which is unusual. People like that's like my biggest thing. It's like, hey, come on the show. You'll plug your business, maybe get a couple customers, and it'll be great for you. You don't want that at all. You you didn't want to give out your number. You would kind of want to do an alias situation. Well, you know, I probably get 50 phone calls a day right now. It's actually hard for me to get any work done during the day because the phone is nonstop. I answer every call that comes into my telephone. There is nobody that screens it. Uh, once in a while, I'll hand the phone to one of my workers and just say, practice. You know, what can you possibly do wrong? Uh, most of the calls that I get are for above ground pools that were installed incorrectly last year where the people don't have the knowledge in order to operate them properly. They don't understand the water. They don't understand that they needed to winterize them last year. They just let them go pretty much uh, to crap. And uh, now they want them cleaned up. They might have had twice as many pools built last year, but there's not twice as many pool guys. So unfortunately, my best advice to everybody out there is go on YouTube. Learn how to do it, get a six pack of beer with your friends and change your liner if that's what you need to do. I'm not the guy who's gonna come. And that's, that's kind of why I was trying to shy away from giving out my phone number and this kind of thing, just because there are so many calls that come in. Uh, I strive to do high rise work, country clubs, and homeowners in grounds. And that is busier than ever. I am currently booked, it's the 4th of July, almost through September. Many of my friends in the pool business uh, they are booked for the next three and four years because they build. I do not build. I refurbish. There's more money in refurbishing. There's no permits necessary. There's no inspections necessary. As long as I'm changing item for item in the high rise, I'm good to go. As long as I can find the parts, which is a whole nother topic of discussion. So what's the situation though? So how come there's not as many pool guys? How come people are not doing this as a profession anymore? Or were they not? Was it never in high demand? How come... What's the situation with doing what you're doing? Well, a lot of guys think there's a lot of money in building them because they, they see that big dollar amount. $100,000 for an in-ground vinyl liner, $200,000 to do a concrete pool. Uh, by the time you're done doing all the busy work, you, you really haven't made that much and it, it burns up a lot of your summer. When I started doing this, I worked for a gentleman out in New Jersey and I was building one pool every three days. Every, they would give me a hole, when I left three days later, there'd be water in it. I did that for six years. I don't like to dig. I don't want to shovel in my hand. Uh, so refurbishing is, is much faster. It's much easier. It's more lucrative. It's more satisfying. The difference between when I get to someone's house and when I leave is strikingly different. Jaws drop. I've had people cry when they see their pool. They said that they've never seen it that nice ever. So. You know, I also don't have a, a product that I can sell nationwide. I need to come to your house in the Chicagoland area, possibly Milwaukee, down into uh, you know, in Wisconsin, down into Indiana. Uh, 
But to go all the way across the nation to work on somebody's pool, that's why I was kind of hesitant to shy away from giving out my number. But if you are here in Chicago, feel free to look me up. You can check out my website at thepoolguyschicago.com anytime you want. If you have a question to ask me, I, I answer a lot of questions for people on the phone. Uh, if I can and you not, do have a burner phone now. Correct? I do have a burner phone now, just for this show, uh, <laughs> because I was a little afraid to give my number out because once you're on the internet, you're on the internet forever. And, and that doesn't appeal to you? Uh, I don't mind it. I just don't want people calling my phone for the next 10 years. You know, And like it's never crossed. Like you, you really can't find someone that can answer the calls for you? Uh, I think it comes down to a matter of money. What am I really going to make? If I have somebody answer the phone all day long and I can't get any work out of it. So what is, so let's get into that then. So you said some of these with a certain type of liner is 200, 100,000. You know, your average vinyl liner pool goes for about $100,000 without, without the concrete deck or stone, whatever you want to do to it. You could spend another $100,000 on the hardscape. What's so, that? What's that? Like the, uh, the rocks stone work, rocks, Around waterfalls, yeah, okay. all okay. kinds of, you know, bells and whistles and slides and waterfalls and, you know, diving boards, whatever else you can possibly, you know, possibly imagine. But your basic swimming pool currently goes for about a hundred thousand, 125,000. Uh, like I said, before you do the hardscape, uh, those are the pools that I really strive to go after because a liner change I can do in one day takes me about four hours to dump your pool, take out the old liner, prep the pool, get the new liner in, and get some water going into it. Okay. I could do two of those a day if I have them empty and ready to go. I currently, like I say, I'm booked for quite a while here, and I think I put in another six orders last week for custom-made liners. Everything is measured within a quarter of an inch, and they come to me in a big box. They weigh a couple of hundred pounds, and... Uh, we just take them out, open them up, let the sun hit them. I love the smell of the vinyl in the morning. Uh, it just smells like money. It just smells new. It's so you said something if you, about it. If you, couldn't, if you couldn't afford to do that, so three days, every three days, I assume, that's a fast time to build and dig. That and is water. a very fast time to do it. So you were doing that for six years. So you were doing what, two pools a week then? I was doing two pools okay. a week. So two pills a week, you're making a hundred. So you're making two hundred. I'm not making it. I was working for the guy who was making it. Oh, okay. So after a few years, I said, "What don't I know about this?" And I said, "Nothing." So I went into the vinyl liner business out in New Jersey, and I did a lot. I did a tremendous amount of pools out there, and uh, I actually sold the business, came out here. My mom lives out here, and I started up again. And I took it down a bunch of notches. So now I try to get my hands on everything. I want to be there. I don't want crews running around out there who don't know what they're doing. I don't want the headaches of misinstallation. So I prefer to put my hands on everything. And there's only one of me out here. So there's no franchises. There's nothing. Uh, so it's just a matter of I want to be there to do it for you. That way it's right. And uh, we don't have any problems. You're a very happy customer. Okay. So that's your... your that, that's your way of doing business. You want to make sure it's done right. You don't want to have this big team. Uh, and in order of doing that, you can't get flooded with too many calls. Too Correct. Many okay. I have guys that uh, I work with specifically who do my plastering. Uh, I do a lot of tile work inside of concrete pools. Uh, I have guys that do plaster, and I have guys uh, who come out, and they do my uh, industrial commercial grade liners, which are actually made on site. And all of those items are really a specialty, just like doing the liners are. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be a specialist in this field in order to make it. And I've got pool companies out there reaching out to me to come and handle liners because, you know, they do openings and closings. That's their specialty. My specialty is doing the liners and knowing the people who can get the job done for you, no matter what it might be. You know, that's you say liner and that's always one of the most common usually use words with, with pools because you always hear people hop in someone's don't do that. It'll rip the liner. It'll rip the liner. What's something that actually does rip the liner pretty easily. Is there, is there a certain like don't when it comes to the liner? Well, don't take your skimmer pole and stand on your diving board and pole vault into the center of the deep end. You'll leave little semicircles in the bottom of the liner. I've been to people's houses before. Dad says my pool's leak. And I say, well, look down there. You got 500 holes down there. When he starts yelling at the kids, I usually leave and call him back a couple of days later when he calms down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you don't do the above grounds anymore, you said. 
You know, above grounds, that's a, that's a temporary thing. They're made to last, the liners are made to last about three years. And people try to get five, 10 years out of them, unlike an in-ground pool liner, which is designed to be, have a life of about 20 years on them. And as long as you keep them full, keep them covered, keep the water clean, don't abuse the water chemically by overshocking it in the springtime, it'll last you for 20 years. I went to one a couple of years ago in Dyer, Indiana. There's actually a sticker on the back of every one of these things. And there's a manufacturing date on it. That liner was actually 4-0, 40 years old. There was no color left in it. When we took the water out of it, it just, it fell apart like confetti. We actually had to sweep it up off the bottom of the pool. Wow. So 40 if, years. If you take care of it, it'll take care of you. They got their money's worth. They, they definitely got their money's worth. How much worth. is an above ground pool liner, the ones that last three years? You know, you could buy one of those online if you can find them right now, which it's very difficult. I get a lot of people calling me asking me if I sell them and I say no and I try to direct them online, but uh, it's real hard to find them right now. Texas had a small problem a few months back, if you remember. Uh, almost a million swimming pools froze overnight in one night. Yeah, with that winter it, storm. With the Texas. winter storm. And these people, I had 30, 40, 50 people call me from Texas and I was wondering why they were calling me at first. And they said that they lost their power and what do they do? What do they do? Their pool's frozen now. And I just had to tell them, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, there's, there's nothing you could do. The best thing you could do is to keep the water running and the, and the pump running, but once the water freezes inside of the pump and the filter and the pipes, the pool's fucked. The pool has real problems. You've got a pipe replacements, uh, pumps, filters. So all of the all of the, the the available resources that there were that normally come into play this year in the spring are gone. So where do they get them from? Well, the parts uh, are actually made uh, a lot of it from plastic and the petrochemical facilities that are down in Texas, they had the same problem as the pools. They lost their power. So the plastic manufacturing companies that make the pellets are currently down. Add that to the uh, supply destruction chain. I mean, it's gone out there. There's nothing left. It's hard to even find pumps and filters at this time. And let's add a kicker to it. I hope you got your chlorine tablets right now. If you don't, I suggest that you run out and get them. Uh, the factory down in Louisiana that makes 75% of the chlorine tablets uh, burned down. It's, it's gone. So there's one small factory making 25% of the chlorine tablets for 100% of the United States. I just don't see how it's going to work. So we're in a major pool crisis is what you're saying. Huge pool crisis. Not enough pool guys, too many pools, no parts, uh, chlorine tablets out. Uh, and yet people still call me every day trying to get me to build a pool. I actually try to do them a favor right now and just ask them to just lay down on the couch or go, go make a friend who's got a pool and don't really build one of these things right now. I did the same thing last year for COVID. People who never wanted a pool, thought about having a pool, uh, wanted to have something to do with their kids and they wanted a backyard oasis because they weren't spending their money on vacations or whatever else they, they, they waste their extra capital on. And uh, everybody built a pool. And it worked out great last year. Now you got a hole in your backyard that you have to take care of. So I needed to remind people of that. Be, think about what you're doing here. Yeah, but I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's almost like getting a pet where they think it's just very, you know, oh yeah, they'll install the pool. I'll probably have to throw a tablet of chlorine and I'll probably have to clean it here. They don't realize, they don't, they don't, they don't you know. You gotta babysit it every day. You have to watch it every day. See, that's why you're here, James. Every time it rains, you gotta go out and check your water and adjust your chemicals. The best thing I could tell anybody to do in regard to their pool is put in a salt water generator. They're only a few thousand dollars. And the salt water generator will actually make the chlorine that you need so you don't have to babysit that part of it. Salt water generator. It's also healthier for you and you do not have all those chemicals that you're swimming in. Damn, so what are we gonna do? How's this pool crisis gonna be? Uh, How's it gonna end? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Just don't give out my number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you actually go down to Texas to help out? No, I did not go down to Texas. Uh, last year and the year before that, uh, things really have been picking up in my business just as a normal course of business. And I'm now working completely through the entire year where usually I would get off. Uh, my season would end around Thanksgiving. And everybody's covered up, tucked in for the wintertime. And then I would start up again around April. Uh, didn't happen last couple of years. We've been going right around the clock. 
Uh, there's a lot of indoor pools that are here in Illinois, and those pools need to be serviced by somebody. And you also had some, when we talked on the phone a couple of days ago, you had some strong thoughts about people who buy pools in Illinois or Jersey or basically any cold climate, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fiberglass pools, uh, let's talk about the different kind of pools. Above ground pools, it's okay in a cold weather environment. They're inexpensive. Uh, it's a little difficult to get somebody willing to come out and work on them, but if you look hard enough, you can find somebody, or it's not that big of a deal to actually go ahead and do it yourself. Uh, In-ground pools, concrete, uh, cold weather maybe not be so good for them, but they're really beautiful. You can do a lot with them. You can free form them. You can make them any shape that you want. Uh, and the service that's required on them, if you, again, if you take care of the water, it'll take care of the plaster, you take care of the plaster and uh, you know the pool will take care of you. You need to refurbish them maybe once every 20 years, uh, cost you maybe uh, $20,000, $25,000. And that's not bad if you cost the average ad out over 25 years, it's, it's a thousand bucks a year to have a pool in your backyard. As long as you take, you know, you're pumping your filter, try to protect it, cover it up over the winter time, uh, is always a good idea. Uh, but make sure that you really know what you're doing when it comes time to blowing out your lines, dropping your water down, blowing out your lines, and putting antifreeze in your lines to make sure that the, the pipes don't freeze here. You don't want me coming to your house and telling you that you got fifteen dollars or $20,000 worth of pipe work all because you didn't blow your lines out. And this is a common thing that happens to people when they buy a house with a pool for the first time. They're just not familiar with it, and the learning curve is extremely expensive. So I'm here to tell you, you got to babysit your pool Get, find a professional pool guy somewhere in your area and make friends with him and understand that he's under a lot of pressure uh, because everybody wants their pool taken care of immediately. And just like any pool guy or myself, there's only a few of us out there. Uh, there are quite a few people who present themselves as a pool guy who probably shouldn't be in the business. But, you know, some of these uh, landscaping companies are, are getting calls for pools, so they're, they're trying it out. And I can't say that they're all bad, you know, it's, it's please relieve the rest of us from, from some of the stress. Uh, but I would still kind of shy away from the above ground world. Concrete pools are really expensive. Believe it or not, I have something called uh, pool float out insurance, which means that if I empty the water out of your concrete pool, your pool can actually float out of the, out of the ground, just like a boat in the, in the ocean. Really? It becomes buoyant. The deep end lifts up typically about a foot, foot and a half. You've seen it happen? I've seen this, the result of this. And when you fill them back up again, they just crack right down the middle and they are done. Damn. If they float out of the ground, it's a pool reinstall plus a, plus you got to take it apart and it's not cheap. Wow. Well, real quick here, James, I will say, don't call him, but you can call J.P. Grazianos. You see the beef kits if you're watching on YouTube. We got them right here. Go to tastereelchicago.com. You can get this almost instantly. It's going to take two days to ship or so uh, because Jim has them back in stock over there. So get, get that. You like some Italian beef, right? Of course I do. Yeah, there you go. Who so doesn't? Got, there you go. Grab one of these before you leave. Uh, got the mezzo giardinera. It's got the uh, Italian beef seasoning. You just got to go buy your uh, the broth, the chuck, and grab um, some buns, and it'll be you'll be good to go. So go get it, J.P. Graziano, um, tastereelchicago.com. Also, they have a late-night window right now. Open Thursday, Friday, Saturday till 1 a.m. If you put in your online order, uh, pretty much any time for pickup. But if you want to get it delivered, make sure you put that in by 9.30 and uh, the stop doing deliveries by 10. But that online window is open. Uh, so if you're out, you know, having a few drinks, stop by JP Graziano, 901 West Randolph, and go check out that new night window. All right, so what are the other two kinds of pools? Well, you got a in-ground vinyl liner pool. Uh, that's my personal favorite for cold weather environments. Uh, keep in mind that the liner thickness, people always ask me, is a thicker liner better than a thinner liner? And when it comes to in-ground products, my personal opinion after doing this for years and years and years is that a 20 mil liner is better than a 27 or 28 mil liner. And you say, well, what, what, what do you mean? Thicker is better, of course. Well, you know, liners tend to shrink as years go by, year 10, 11, and 12. And we drop the water level down here in the cold weather environments. And that liner wants to shrink in the corners. Well, the thicker the liner, the harder it is for it to push back into place. So you're actually really better off with a 20 mil liner uh, in your in-ground pool. And then the last kind of pool that we really have are fiberglass pools. And hands down, they belong in warm weather environments, nothing to talk about. They just, 
They don't like to be empty. They should never be emptied. And you say, I know you're going to ask me, why don't I live in Florida or California? Why don't I do this there? Right? Yeah. There's no money in it. Nothing ever happens to them. If you go there and you buy a pool, you can put any kind of pool you want in the ground, above ground. Nothing will ever really happen to it because there's no freezing. There's no shutdown. It's open 24-7, 365 days a year. And you even said, too, people are crazy if they live in Chicago and get a pool. The swimming season here runs June, July, some of June, July, August. You're talking two months for all the money that and all the, the stress that you have to go through to get it open, protect it, put money into it, take care of the freezing aspects, buying new pumps, filters, heaters because they get damaged from the cold. Uh, I think most dads swim in them maybe three times a year, but they're really nice to have. Don't get me wrong. I love my swimming pools. I, I wouldn't do anything else in the whole world other than swimming pools. I really enjoy doing it. They are the most fantastic thing to have in your backyard. It's a great way to gather with your family and enjoy special events. So they do have their place, but they do have a cost. Do you have one? No, I would never have one. <laughs> I live really? on the lake with a beautiful view of the water and I don't have to clean it. I don't have to service it. And it freezes, it unfreezes. I don't have to do anything. Wow. So you're... The pool guy recommends that you do not get a pool. I will tell everybody that. Go make friends with somebody who has one and bring them over a little bit of shock and a little bit of chlorine tablets once in a while. You'll be their best friend. That way you're not just drinking their beer. Wow. This is, you, you're killing the industry here. You know, I'm afraid the industry is going to be killing me pretty soon, the way that <laughs> things are going. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the worst thing you could do to a pool? Leave it empty. If you empty it, uh, the concrete will delaminate. If you have a fiberglass pool, it most definitely, I mean, one of the ways that they remove a fiberglass pool is to empty it out, stick a couple of garden hoses back behind the bottom of it and allow it to pop out of the ground. Mm. So leaving them empty is a bad idea. But what and do you it, do if you're in a cold climate? You got to leave it empty. Yeah, you, you can't really empty it. You empty it about halfway. Oh, okay. And then you, oh. expensive cover goes on top. It's a mesh spring loaded cover, safety cover. You can actually walk across it. They have pictures of elephants on them and cars on them and stuff. They're very, very strong and they hold the snow weight. So it does allow the water to travel back into the pool and fill it back up again. But mostly you're concerned with the pipe work and to make sure that that's blown out. You need to empty a couple feet of water out of it in the, in the fall time. How about peeing and shit in the pool? Yeah, that's another interesting topic. Uh, shit, and I don't, I don't really know a lot about, you know what? If you have fecal matter in your pool, most definitely, you got to do something, buy a new liner. I don't know. I think that's a bit extreme. I wouldn't incur that cost. Uh, we've all seen Caddyshack, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, baby Ruth bar and all that. Yeah. Uh, but mostly I'm mostly concerned health wise about the urine in pools. Your average homeowner pool has between 20 and 200 gallons of urine in the pool water and chemicals will not remove it. The only way to remove it is to remove all of the water and start over again. Like I said, find a liner pool. Uh, they shrink when you take the water out of them, you're buying a new liner from me. And commercial pools, uh, let's go back for a second. Keep in mind that most homeowner pools, if you got 200 gallons of pee in a 20 or 30,000 gallon pool, it doesn't seem like that much, uh, but it really is because it's just unsanitary. Uh, commercial grade pools, uh, they could have 2,000 to 20,000 gallons of urine in them by the end of the summertime with all the kids that go in there. And keep in mind, chlorine doesn't really burn your eyes. It's the chlorine acting with the urine that burns your eyes. Wow. So when you get out of a pool and your eyes are red, just be aware that you know what you're swimming with. It's piss eyes. It's piss eyes. Something to think about when you're out there at a public pool. <laughs> Dangle your feet in there and that's about it. So you wouldn't swim in public pools? I would never swim in a public pool ever in my life. Wow. Never. So how many people call you? They're like, hey, I got an absolute steamer just at the bottom of the fucking toilet. Of the, of the you pool. know, I got people that call me with dead deer in them, dead rabbits. <laughs> uh, you know, I won't even get into the deer story. Let, let's just say the thing kind of got bloated and started falling apart when we were trying to remove it. Uh, it was not a fun day. You're pulling deer out of a pool? Well, yeah, they, they get in there and they can't get out. They get stuck in the cover. They drown. 
People leave them in there all winter because they don't know how to get them out. They wait for the springtime and call the poor pool guy out to come take care of it. It happens. It's happened maybe two or three times in my life. Uh, At least you don't got to deal with gators. No, no gators, but down in Florida, you sure do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they creep around and they climb in your pool. How bad is that for those Florida pools? Well, you know, you got to call animal control to come and get them out. Those are wild animals, and they will, in fact, attack you if they feel threatened or cornered. Oh, yeah. Got to put the Dundee outfit on and get that thing out. Better do something because. Ice Cube, better Again, don't call me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, for sure. Is there, does some type of device exist where you can test how much urine is in your pool? You know, I do not know of a test like that personally. I'm not going to say that it's not out there. But remember, I'm not really a water guy. I don't come to your house and I I, I don't balance your water and turn it from green to clean. Uh, The jobs that I do are larger jobs. And if you were, you know, if I was a a pool guy who who opened and closed and did water, I would have I would have a whole community under my belt. I'd have 50 or 100 people that live locally to me. And that way you could bounce around from one guy to the next and everybody's close together. Most of my jobs are about 45 minutes to an hour apart. And it's just the, the cost of me getting to your house and the loss of, of travel time uh, would just increase your costs. And it's just, it's not worth it for me to do it. It's not worth it for you to do either. That got me to thinking though. I, I just entered the shark tank for a second there. If that doesn't exist, someone could probably make some money on that. A way to test, you know, if it's a, if it's a high piss day. At the public pool, kids ain't going. You know what? Put in your chlorine, get it to the correct level, swim in it for a day. If you come up with red eyes, you have your answer. Yeah. Well, you know, before you jump in, though, you'd like to know. You know what? I I will actually swim in a pool if I do the work on it and I fill it up and I'm the first one in it. Then it's okay. I don't mind getting in it. Yeah. Really, just at home, tell your kids, you know, tell everybody just... Cut it out, man. Go inside the house. Because once it's in there, it's in there. And it's it's something that nobody wants to be around. What's typically the dirtiest? Like a water park, a school pool, a hotel pool? What do you find to be the dirtiest? I, I, I'm going to say that overall, unsanitary conditions is probably going to be in a hotel pool because there's nobody really there to maintain it. The maintenance staff is not really versed in it. Uh, high-rise pools, uh, the guys that, that operate and maintain them, uh, the staff that's on hand, these guys, they deal with it every day for years, and they're very, you know, they're pretty good. A lot of the high-rise guys, the maintenance guys, they're at the, at the building for 10, 20 years. They, they do a, you know, their whole career there, and it's a shame to lose them because once they retire out, they hire a new guy in, and, and then he's got to go through this expensive learning curve, and it costs the building money and frustration and a lot of downtime. Yeah, that makes sense. I've heard school's pretty bad too. Well, you get a bunch of kids in there and you get them all in and you got class after class after class after class. You know, funny thing, when you go to a public pool, next time you're there and you're observing, I'd really like you to look at and consider how many people are there at the pool. And then I want you to look over at the bathroom and see who's coming in and out. Pretty much the only people that come in and out are people who are entering or leaving that pool itself. Where, where do all these people go to the bathroom? That's why I don't want to swim in any public pool because people just, they just, they think it doesn't matter. And you might not does. know, and I, I, I clearly don't know. Is there, is there an actual long-term, like, is there a bad effect of doing this? Obviously it's disgusting, it's someone's urine, but is there something like, you know, fucking some type of thing, some type of sickness you can get from swimming in pee? Let's like, start with pink eye in a hot tub. Okay. Never put your head underneath underneath the water in a hot tub. It okay. is a breeding ground for bacteria mm. and other negative environment. You know, Because it's just, hot, it gets- It's those, hot. Well, sure, you make it nice- The butt flakes going. 100 degrees, got some bacteria in there, and you're off to the races. Uh, I recommend that people change their hot tub water four times a year. Even if it's in your own house, shower before you get in it. Uh, most people won't do that because it's in their house and they feel as though they can do as they wish, which they certainly can. I mean, it's your house. You, you could do whatever you want. But I would still change the water. The cost on changing a water in a hot tub is minimal. It might be, you know, 50 bucks worth of water, $20 worth of water, depending on where you live. Yeah. Um, in ground pools, they're more like. 1,000, 1,500 to fill up, so it's a little bit more, and it is a punch in the eye after you get done having all of your pool work done that you get to incur another expense of filling it up somehow one way or another. 
I can send water trucks out to you. If you have groundwater that has a sulfur odor to it, Florida suffers from this. Uh, some of Indiana suffers from this, uh, this sulfur water and it stinks. You can't get it out. There's nothing you can do to it chemically. So that's ideally what the water trucks are for. And I, people call me for water trucks and I try to direct them and say, you know, the, the cost of a water truck, you know, might be 400 bucks a load or something. You need four, five, six loads. You, you talk about a couple grand. If you fill it up out of your hose, it might cost you, you know, half that, a third of that, depending on where it, you live. To wait. It's worth it to just let it go. It's worth run. it, you know, and what's a couple extra days going to matter? Yeah. You got to wait for it to warm up anyway. Hopefully you got a heater that functions. So are hot tubs generally pretty disgusting too then? You just kind of. They're all the same thing. I don't, yeah. I don't work on hot tubs. I don't work on spas. Uh, th there's too many parts inside. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot in, a lot of the inside has such insulation on it. Very similar to the great stuff that you would get from home Depot. Mm -hmm. Uh, that stuff's really hard to work around and you still need to find the leaks. They're hidden because of this, the, the, the material that they put in them. And more importantly, it's very hard to clean all that stuff off in order to glue the pipes back together. Again, it's such a small working area. Uh, hot tubs should really be not left outside or again, properly closed by a professional, not so much just a homeowner. Hmm. Okay. What about, uh, what about semen in a pool or a hot tub? Uh, my best advice to you is uh, stay out of anywhere where there's a gymnasium, okay? <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I can think of for you. Yeah? Yeah, not, not much of a concern of mine. Filtration will take care of any kind of waste uh, in that regard. Uh, but the urine, again, is just a, it's a full liquid. It never solidifies in any way. And you've, you've said you've had a lot of issues. Like that's a common, I mean, that's one of the classic porno themes of all time is the pool guy. Here he comes. You know, you got, you know, I, that. I, I actually did a job. Uh, I, I won't say where Winneka and, uh, <laughs> and, and up here in Winneka, uh, this guy had this huge indoor swimming pool. This thing was absolutely massive. It was, it was three swimming pools. It was just a monster. And I walked in and he said, this is what I need done. And I said, okay, you know, and you know, halfway through the day, I said, hey, you know what, uh, you know, where's the bathroom? Oh, we got one right over there. I walk into this bathroom and all I, and all, I swear I heard dun, 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 dun. And I'm looking up and I'm looking around and there's mirrors on the ceiling and there's mirrors on the walls and there's mirrors on the floor and the door is a mirror. And I shut the door and it looked like a funny house. And I thought to myself, what went on here in the 70s? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the only real thing that I can really think of that, was, that led me down that path. But yeah, pool boys got a bad rep. Yeah. And I'm a pool guy, so you know, and I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to service your pool, not you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Did have any of your guys ever gotten in trouble? Uh, had a guy break his leg once, climbing out of a window, broke it. He did come back with the check. Um, <laughs> I, I won't get into that. We can all just assume what happened there. Oh, so he was, so he was getting chased out by someone? I think the husband was coming in the front door and he was jumping out of the window. Oh, fuck. Yeah, well, you know, problems. It, it happens. How was his time. leg? Did he, did, was he like, hey, James, can you take care of the bill? No, I, I, I gave him his pay for the day and I said, you know what? You shouldn't be doing that to the homeowner. Go away. Come back six weeks later. It was the end of the season. He came back the next year. Oh, this guy's banging this guy's wife when he was working in his pool. That's not a good thing. I don't recommend anybody no. do that. You know, it's a bad idea. Any other stories like that? Oh, uh, you know, a, a nice little story. These guys, my guys went out to go uh, do a job. It was about an hour and a half away. It was a little more than what we like to go. And uh, they go out and their truck broke down when they were more than halfway there. They didn't call me. I didn't know about it. And they called me up later on in the afternoon and said, hey, you know what? We had our truck towed to the job so we could do it. And I said, guys, you got double pay. I get you home, I paid for the tow coming home, and then I had three or four of my other guys claim that they ran out of gas trying to get the same thing. No, it doesn't work like that, fellas. No, I'm sorry about that. So if it's a bona fide, if you go out of your way for the company, for me, uh, I'll handsomely pay you. It's just that fair. I'll take a little bit of a loss to give you a little bit of a bonus. That's nice for you. And I asked you before we went on, I said I want to save it because you're getting stuck in the pool. 
Because I've seen on your website, I see you're like in a uh, like harness apparatus, like holding you up. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where that faulted and you fell no, down the, you know, and you're screaming, hey, Arnold, like I'm down at the bottom of the pool? You know, what do you do when you're in a bold bottom of a concrete pool and there's nothing to hold on to and about eight feet up, you need to do some grinding or you have a crack repair. What do you do? Well, I personally like to put on my little climbing gear. I have a little harness. They use the same harness for painting uh, water tanks in the, in the towns. And I actually drop myself down and I do the work. And the same thing doing tile. I have a little different approach for doing that. And I show all my, my pool customers and my, my pool buddies that also own businesses. I say, you know, how do you do your tile? They say, well, we build scaffolds. And I say, you know, that's really dangerous. You can really hurt yourself if you fall off of one of these little planks that you have going around the, the inside of the pool. So I put on my waders and I have a little fishing boat, you know, that everybody would use out there to, to go into a little lake or a pond to go fishing. And I will actually float around. I'll take out a foot of water and I'll actually float around and pop off your tile and, and do the work on your pool uh, with water in it and retile your pool for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just a, it's just a preference. It's just you. a preference. And gotcha. I thought it was because you'd be stuck at the bottom or something like that. No, the only way you get stuck at the bottom is if, uh, oh, I don't know, you're plastering a pool and you plaster yourself into the bottom. There's no mm -hmm. way out. Well, yeah. I, or you paint yourself into the bottom of the pool. I mean, give yourself a way out. The slopes are steep, they're dangerous, the epoxy gets on your shoes, you're not getting out of there, somebody's gotta throw you down a rope or a garden hose or whatever's handy, and you gotta snake your way up on your belly, you get all full of the epoxy, and, and it, it's pretty much all over you for two or three or four days. How about some of these you know, California teens turning these pools into uh, skate parks? Does that chap your ass? Um, California born, skateboard and riding, you know what? They actually started building some pools back in the day that were bold specifically for skateboard riding. Mm. Uh, you gotta remember too, the bottom of a, of a swimming pool is typically a main drain, and that's a very, very fast stopping point when you're in a skateboard. Yeah. So it's- Smoke that, you'll be- And a lot, a lot, most pools actually, they're not really bold. They have a specific design to them, and the corners are very, very sharp when you get down at the bottom of the wall to, to when you get to the actual bottom of the pool floor itself. Sometimes that's only a six inch radius or a 12 inch radius, which is very, very sharp. And there's just no way to make that, to make that comfortably on a skateboard. So most of the stuff that you see on TV, those, those, those pools were designed for skateboard use. If there's like a drowning or something, does it ever get serious with like, do they call you out and be like, hey, you gotta inspect this or is this kind you of know, part of the job? What they've done over the past uh, 10, 20 years is they've gone from eliminating one single main drain. Now you have to have two far enough apart. So if you get your hand stuck in one, you're messing around, you take off the grate, something happens, your hand doesn't get locked in there. The pump is on and uh, you drown. So by having two main drains that are teed together in the center, uh, you can still have that water flow from the other main drain, get your hand out. Uh, and on a lot of commercial pools now, uh, all required by law, there's an automatic shutoff where if there's an interruption in the flow, the whole system immediately shuts down to prevent any kind of damage. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Um, all right, I think near the end, is there any other stories that we didn't get to? That no, you know? I, I, I just, I'm here to tell you that if you're gonna put one of these things in, take care of it, take responsibility for it, and keep an eye on it, babysit it. Forget about going on vacation all, all winter, all summer long. You have to stay home. Your friends are not gonna come and take care of it. Please don't call me when you got a green pool because you left it unattended. You must close them in the, in the winter time. You have to close them properly. And if, if you do all of these things and you keep an eye on your water and, and, you, and you take care of it, the pool will be one of the nicest things that you've ever had as, as far as a luxury item. I really enjoy them much more than owning a boat. I would rather have a pool in my backyard. You get a lot more use out of it. Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable. Keep in mind too that your swimming pool is the number two killer of children in the United States because children are left unattended in the pools and it is a bad idea. What's the number one? Uh, I'm not even sure. I would, I would assume there would be a... car accidents or, or some kind of child. Uh, that's just the pool guy stat, defects. we're number that's two? Just a, just a pool yeah. guy stat. Yeah. So wow. door alarm your pools, uh, 
They have flotation devices that you can put on them that will alarm in the kitchen. If, if some water movement happens, it actually recognizes the waves. Protect your pool, protect your family, put a fence around it. Make sure you keep your gate locked. Other kids come in the neighborhood. People are naturally drawn to water ever since we came out of the water millennia ago. Uh, we've all been trying to get back in it again. Mm -hmm. And we all love to be around it. We all need it. We breathe it. We, we drink it. We cook our food with it. We bathe in it. We do everything with water. And, uh, you know, having one of these things in your backyard is really, it's a wonderful thing to do. So I'm, I'm all about, you know, people, if you take care of it uh, and you need some service every 10 years, call me. You know, I, I'll come run out and I'll give you an estimate and I'll do what got to be done and uh, be very fair about it. Be very upfront. Pull no punches. Nothing's candy coated. Uh, it is what it is. And you know, I'd love to help you out. Uh, if you want to give me a call or contact me and you're in the Chicago land area, please go on to uh, the pool guy, and, and have a look around and see if it's uh, something, a service that we might offer for you. But they should call the burner phone, right? What's the burner phone? Yeah, you guys ought to probably call the burner phone for a little bit here at 872-222-2235. Call the burner phone. 2235 burner phone, the pool guy, Chicago.com. And then I should, <laughs> I, I should say my, my other, my last takeaway here is that more it seems like more people should go into being a pool guy uh it seems like i, I that's wish a that they would I, I really wish that you know there's going to be a big demand for pool guys and that could be a good living it seems uh, like you've done well for yourself it's a very it's a very very lucrative living once you can personally get through your own learning curve as to how to take care of these things because there is no pool school there is no pool college that i am aware of uh you just have to get out there start at the bottom so to speak and a lot of guys start off in the above ground arena and they learn the pumps, the filters. The, it's the same job doing an above ground pool as it is doing an in ground pool. The liner changes the same. Take out the water, take out the liner, prep the pool, put in the new liner, put in the new water. I mean, it's the same thing all over. Uh, it's just on a much smaller scale and it's much more handleable. There's no measuring that's required. So it's a great place to start. And if anybody wants a job right now, Start your own little business. Start doing above ground work. You will, I guarantee you, you will get more calls than you could ever possibly do the work. There you go. Are you, you're, I mean, are you rich from this? I drive a Maserati. Holy fuck. You drive a Maserati? I do, sir. We're talking millions? No, no. Remember, it's just me anymore. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the IRS really liked me last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they really, they liked me. Wow. I, I don't like them so much. Well, there you go, people. Go start getting in the pool business. Get in I the might. pool business. Yeah, that's, wow. Okay. Uh, pool guy, James, thank you, sir. Hey, thank you for having me. And uh, you guys be, be careful out there and swim safe. There okay? you go. Good last message. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you then.